Hello, we're now approaching about 10.30 p.m. in Nigeria. I'm Kemia Mololulunlaya, a retired journalist, pharmacist, and PR specialist. Today is April 5th, 2019. Today marks the year that Nigeria saw the horror of the Afa robbery. Afa is a small town in Kwara State, the home of a very good school called Adesoye College. My brother went to that college. My late brother, Oyeleke Olunlayo, who died at the age of 17 in the UK 20 years ago. I would never forget Ofa because of my brother's going to school there, a school that revamped his life and he became a very intelligent person. But nothing like what happened a year ago this time last year it was a Thursday afternoon, and it was a very heated, horrific night. Today, it's a Friday. The offer robbery, 33 people were killed. I was the first journalist in the world to tell Nigerians that 33 people, at least 33 people, died in that mass robbery. Five banks were involved, and... The armed robbers showed up in Offa, the town, and the first place they went to was the police station, where they shot and killed about 10 officers. Killing the police officers paralyzed the whole first responder issue. If you kill police, who's going to come to the bank robberies? So the basic bottom line was a massacre in the police station. This robbery was orchestrated by several men and the ringleader, one Michael Adiku, a former police officer himself, who said he was dismissed unfairly and he wanted revenge. He also told us that he wasted 22 lives on his own. We all remember him carrying the AK-47, so he shot and killed 22 out of the 33. Very sad. And most importantly, some of the suspects turned out to be people that worked for the Senate president, Bukola Saraki. Whatever kind of job they do for Saraki, maybe his aides, it's more like they were his aides. Why were they robbing a bank and then calling their boss later to show up and went to the king? Nobody knows. The questions have never been answered because everybody in Nigeria is lawless. The IGP who was in charge of this investigation, Ibrahim Idris, is no longer there. He's retired. And you know what? He tried to get Bukola Saraki, the Senate president, to come for invite, uh, invitation for questioning, and Saraki refused. And then when the Senate themselves summoned the IGP, he refused. Everybody's lawless. It's always the innocent masses that get killed in these things and have no say. One thing that's infuriated me a lot is the fact that we Nigerian citizens don't talk. Here I am the daughter of a high-ranking politician who has kept 51 appointments in 58 years, locked up in a prison because a pastor filed a petition saying that I defamed him. Look how that case ended. That's to tell you that nobody is anything in this Nigeria. Okay, the daughter of a governor, I went to prison three times. Anything can happen to anybody at any time. It doesn't matter who you are in Nigeria. Everybody is lawless. Our president defied court orders to enforce bail for Zaksaki, Dasuki, and others, even in Amdekano. So leadership starts at the top. If people are disobeying judges up there on the top, what's next at the end of the day? What really infuriated me is the fact that we don't talk and the people of never spoke. When I say they never spoke, you may have heard in the news, oh, the people want justice. Who are the people? Who are they in America? If 33 people were killed in a bank that same night, we would see their faces in a collage of pictures. Everybody, victim's family will submit photos to the media. We will see who died in those banks. Because in America, the face of the dead is never forgotten. It must remain in the news. But here in Nigeria, everybody is scared of themselves. If you say you're scared of somebody, scared of police, you're scared of yourself. There was a woman wearing a hijab that walked into that bank with a child, and she was killed. We saw her when she entered the bank, didn't know there was shooting going inside. She was pregnant, too. There were two pregnant women in there. 
You, the families of a fat victim, you remember what I did last year. I put a notice up for three months asking for photos of the victims. We need to know who they are. Don't you think you could have gotten compensated by now by somebody? By maybe the Central Bank of Nigeria? There's all this money and oil money and all this big, big Nigerian money that you guys are entitled to. Liability in these banks. The banks did not protect you. That's their job. Banks have insurance. All these people could have collected insurance damages, but Nigerians silent won't say a word until one person sues the bank that they were killed, especially that young girl that was killed doing her NYSC, and we saw her body on the floor of GT Bank, a very disgraceful death. Nobody spoke. How do you want to sue now, now or later? There's a Senate president involved. There's some aides or thugs or whatever you want to call them. Everybody's lying. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's disobeying each other. But innocent people were killed in Alpha. There were different numbers of the dead. 9, 10, 11, 12. I came out and told you 33 from a police source. It was a senior mobile police, Mopo, that told me. We're on our way to Alpha now, Kemi. They don't have mobile units over there. From what we saw, we counted about 33 bodies. Incredible. If you're a member, a family member, a friend, a loved one, or someone that died in those banks, 33 people, we need to know who you are. You guys have liability, you know, that you could sue from, but you don't know your rights, and that's what causes these problems in Nigeria. Like I said, in America, Canada, we always have the phrase, the faces of the dead must never be forgotten. They must remain in the news. But we don't know who died in Alpha. We don't even have one single name. So if, it was, if you were one of those and had a loved one in there, let the media know. Talk to the media. I'm retired now. This is the kind of stuff I did and nobody appreciated me. Talk to TVC. They're good at that. I'm Kemi, I'm a Lululun lawyer. Just like I said, when you enter a bank, be very careful. Don't go to a bank first thing in the morning or last thing in the day. Those are very high times for robbers to operate. Avoid banking in a bank if you can. It gets crowded. Use online banking. Get a mobile app for your bank. Transfer money through that mobile app. Don't always rush into a bank because you got to go into a bank. Things are modern now. A bank in America, I'm not in America. A bank in Canada, I'm not in Canada. Very sad situation. Once again, rest in peace to the lost, the forgotten, and the people we lost in the struggle. I'm Kemi Amolalu Adunlaya, and that's my summary on Kemi Talks Memorial, Kemi Talks Crime on the Offer Robbery. 2018, April 5th, 2018, today, April 5th, 2019.